Can everybody hear me? Cool. Well, after we got through all of that stuff, I'm here to talk about enterprise risk, enterprise risk management through the use of outbound content compliance. And I think when I first posed this to Dolomite, I got the response back like, well, why is that important? And why, why should we talk about that at Freaknik? And one of the things that I came up with is I do this for a living. I work for a company that actually produces a product, and I'm not here to sell it, although I will show it. Um, what's important and what we should know depends on where you are in the IT space and where you are in the legal space. This deals with business issues. Okay. Outbound content compliance, first of all, is a brand new field this year. It's in Gartner's and, and all of IDC's and a lot of the other uh, analysts' big 10 things to do for corporations. What do we see today? How many of you out here are responsible for information security at a company? Okay. You guys have got a lot of, got a lot of controls and policies. Would, would anybody disagree with these top three bullet points? Where's the weaknesses in that? The weaknesses are primarily IT security is focused on the technology. What's the new widget, gadget, tool, toy that we can throw at it to make our network and environment and infrastructure more secure? Those are the firewalls, the IDSs, everything else. Great. What has, what's the biggest thing that's come out of Capitol Hill in the last nine to ten months? Anybody? Yet more privacy legislation? Does anybody know how many states now have privacy legislation after the choice point debacle? I think there are three that don't have it in, in Congress, in state Congress now. Three of the 50 states. All right, so what's happening to business now is they're being continually pressured for more and more compliance. More and more privacy for who? Privacy for the employees, privacy for the company, for the consumers or the customers. Exactly. It's our data. If we look at it from the standpoint of we're customers, right? Who, who's, who buys stuff online? Sorry? What if that customer data of your purchase just was let out to the world? You might say no big deal. Has anybody here ha ever had their identity stolen? Is that a lot of fun? How's your credit report doing? Yeah. How long ago was it? Two and a half years and $300,000 of personal legal bills to get out of identity theft. And it was a bank that leaked it. Beautiful. So what are, what's happening is now you're getting all this legislation that's pushing the banks other federally regulated and, and vertically regulated industries to monitor what's going on so that they can, they can identify where their risks are and then control it. Absolutely. We've got HIPAA privacy regulations. I've got a slide. Perfect segue. I'll give you that, that money later. We've got HIPAA, GLBA, Sarbanes-Oxley, California State Bill 1386, and every other state has now joined the foray in state legislation on privacy. GLBA is the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, and it's named after the three senators or congressmen who put it together. And Graham, GLBA is about identity theft primarily targeted towards children, but it's an all-encompassing piece of legislation. Okay, Why do you care about outbound compliance? You either work in IT or you work for the company that's going to deploy outbound content compliance. Okay, We are at a hacker con, so one of the things I want to point out here is I'm bringing this here because there are a lot of people in the space that don't realize that this may be going on in the organizations you work for today. And what does that mean? Well, it means you could go to jail for breaking their policies or procedures. You could get fired. 
things of that nature. So I want to bring to your attention the strengths of these solutions, and if you're an IT staffer and you're looking for a solution, that there are these solutions out here today. But we're secure. We spent all this money, right? All this money we spent, and we got all the toys. Are we secure? Do we know where the data is going? All right. You've got to see what's leaving the network. I can't tell you how many customers I've been into to talk about this problem when, when I'm wearing my sales hat and my lovely corporate sales shirt. And I ask them, what's your outbound firewall rule set? Oh, we block IRC. Okay. I got that one from a, a fairly sizable company in Atlanta. I said, so what else do you block? Just IRC. So you've got a rule set that says any, any, any allow, except for 6666, 6667, 6668, 6669. Yeah. How's that working for you? Okay. Soft, chewy center still exists. When you deploy a solution to look at outbound content compliance, what you end up with, or what you see, is we come into a risk life cycle where people have got policy, procedure, and guidelines, and they've got technical control. But they've got very little audit and verification. Anybody here an auditor, an IT auditor, security auditor? Okay. I think you'll, you'll certainly understand this. Audit and verification is, oh, yeah, we did it. Any? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter what's on the network. Hey, as long as that checkbox and the form is checked off, by God, we've done it. Okay. And you laugh. Perception is reality. Perception is reality. If I stand up here and I say something that makes Dolomite angry and upset, then I've upset Dolomite. Perception is reality. And that's a big key when you're talking about audit and verification. Exactly. There, you've got it on film. I bow down to Dolomite. Audit and verification is one of the things that an outbound compliance engine can do. It can actually prove that you are doing, as an organization, what you're supposed to do. Question? Oh, stretch. Okay, we all have seen the pretty diagrams of technical controls, but they don't do very much good if the attack comes from in here. What's to stop somebody from getting on that database, taking all of that personal information off the database, putting it in an Excel spreadsheet, and posting it to their Yahoo Messenger? You think I've ever seen that? I don't know if you can read this, but the big problem here is, especially in financial, financial markets, or any financial plans, any publicly traded organizations, what about, hey, what's the, what's the company going to do two weeks before they release fourth quarter earnings? Can anybody see where that might be beneficial? It's called what? Insider trading. The SEC doesn't like that a lot. Okay. The leak of regulated private customer information, social security number, credit card, health insurance information, HIPAA, as was mentioned earlier, um, you name it. All right. Increased legal exposure for the company. What if somebody's sitting there surfing porn all day? Sorry, Maxie. Yeah, I know it helps your business, but it creates hostile work environment lawsuits. Anybody know what they settle for? Start looking around for somebody else surfing porn. You'll get about $2 million to shut up. It's the average settlement cost today. All right. For those of you that work in information security, I want you to think about these questions that are going to come up. Would you know if a trusted employee pasted confidential acquisition information into a webmail message and sent it to your competitor? 
Is there any way for you to know today? All of those controls that you spent all that money on, how did that leak happen? They're going to ask you. What if they downloaded attack tools? Would you know? Do you know if somebody went and downloaded Nmap? I'm not saying Nmap's necessarily bad, but if they plan on using it to scan your network and identify your weaknesses, well, there's a start. Anybody ever seen internalmemos.com? You might want to jot this one down. There's internal memos and then it's sister sister website, fuckedcompany.com. Okay? I actually have logins to these because of what I do. I, have, I go check out companies before I go visit them and see if anybody's posted shit on their, their company. And then we use it to show them why they need a tool like this. It's a great sales marketing tool. What if they were using a P2P client? Right? How many of you have used Kazaa Lite? How many of you set up Kazaa Lite accepting the defaults? Good. How many of those people that you work with or know set up Kazaa Lite with the defaults? Somebody tell me what Kazaa Lite shares to the entire peer-to-peer -peer community by default. Your entire My Documents directory. Next time you're on Kazaa, search for star.mny. Search for financialstar.xls. You want to see a very surprising list of stuff? Think about some dumbasses, my documents directory inside Corporation X. Here's just some info from the 2000 CSI FBI security survey. General boring stats. And here's really where the exposure comes in. Where's the risk? And if you think, of the, think about this from a business standpoint, this is the business risk to that Internet access and all of that data that goes in and out of the corporation. Any one of these is a leak point. Now think back again to those controls. How do you stop this? Yeah, the Johnny X method of control. Okay. So here's what the industry has come up with as a solution. Anybody give me a short version of this? Two words, starts with big, ends with brother. It's going to, of course, do analysis. They want to match user identity, and the product that I sell and work for does that very well, and um, it would be very, very difficult to spoof. The competitors' products also do it very well. They're primarily focusing on the legislative issues in the organizations that you work with, primarily. That's not to say the products don't also look for other things, like surfing adult when you're not supposed to. How many of you know about Google skirting? Going to Google and surfing for porn, looking through the cached pages. All the URL blockers let it through because it's cached off of Google. Well, I could tell you that a major retail company that uses our product in Atlanta fired 87 people last year for purposefully going around their WebSense controls and surfing porn. And not one of those 87 people had a tenure less than eight years at the company. It's got to have reporting. It should be able to do the same intelligent analysis on stored data and tie in with forensics tools like NCASE. Anybody, any, anybody not heard of NCASE? NCASE is a forensics analysis tool. It is the number one commercial tool in the industry, and it is used widely by police forces, FBI, etc., to take image snaps of your machine 
and then keep a chain of custody and be able to look through those image captures and everything else. So how do they work? Well, they monitor. They sit like on a sniffer port. They reassemble and analyze the data. And then they report on it. It's near real time. So obviously the horses have fled and you're watching them. So the data's already left the enterprise at that point. It's not in line, it's not blocking. It's not like a URL filter or the gateway downstairs is not letting you search. The product that I've got here to show today is broken up in this way. It's basically got some controls, the analysis engine. This piece right here does all of the heavy lifting, does all the packet reassembly, and it only works on TCP streams. So if you want to be really slick, encapsulate everything into UDP port 53 VPNs. Okay, unless, so, unless there's another product in your network that's squashing that kind of stuff, that's probably about the only way you're going to keep your private stuff private. All right. Obviously, the values and benefits, that's one of the sales and marketing slides that I let slip, it, slip through there. Okay, and here's the irony. Here's why I brought this here. The legislation forces the corporations to do this. But in order to do it, they're going to invade your and my privacy while we're at work. And that's legislated. So what I'm saying to you as a, as a group and a community is get used to this. You're going to see more of this. This is, like I said, is a new industry. It's, there's probably five major players in the space but I think that it's going to grow, and you're going to see the major companies like Symantec, et cetera, coming out with a solution like this. I can tell you right now that I know for a fact that they're in all of these verticals. And if you work for one of these verticals and you don't have one of these, or you're not aware of it, and you're not necessarily on the information security team, don't bet your life it's not there. or don't bet your job, it's not there. Okay. Read your organization's computer usage policy. If you see no expectation of privacy, or if they've recently put a new one out, hint, hint. No, it, it depends on the product. For example, the product that I that I work with, we pass it and log it, and you know we note that there's SSL encryption being used, or somebody's you know using SSH, somebody's using encrypted PGP. And why is that important? Anybody work for a company that has a large call center? Okay, if your call center employee all of a sudden started sending PGP encrypted mail and you don't use PGP for your encrypted mail solution? Is that an indicator? Okay, that, in, that individual may be doing something that's, you know, contrary to the company's policy, especially like a unnamed credit card company that we went to down in Florida that exactly had that happening. Ended up the individual was actually selling credit card data, selling identities right out of the call center. Okay. Here's an interesting one. This is a large regional bank, 40,000 employees. They were in the midst of a hostile takeover. Somebody was leaking insider knowledge. They brought the product in. The results, 18 hours later, they found out who it was because they monitored the outbound data. Needless to say, they bought the product, too. Okay. It saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in a whole bunch of things. So they're going to deploy this stuff, whether you want them to or not. Right. From the business standpoint, if you're a business person, this makes sense. 
This is cost savings. This is, this is risk reduction. Okay, we have another case. I have another case study up here. A computer storage company, and there's only three major ones anyway, so you get to pick. They were, they were, it was another acquisition issue. They were acquiring a company. The CSO said we wanted to stop. They brought in a compliance solution. They identified it. They found out, you know, what was the magnitude of the leak? How damaging is it to our organization? And they bought two. All right, are there any questions before I jump into a demo real quick? Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Actually, yes, we have. And, and the company I work for has actually a partnership with Encase. And there, there's a couple of ways around that. For example, one company prints out, and I'll show you on the screen, they'll print out what you were doing. So you typed into Google how to hack Windows, you know, and, and you were aggressively doing that plus a whole bunch of other things. So we're, you know, we're showing a, a path of intent, clear intent. Uh, they'll take those printouts to the person with that person's resignation printed out, pre-preparedness. So here's your choice. You can quit and get no severance, or you can resign based on what we've found, and you can't sue us. And that company that terminated 87 employees for egregious adult surfing uses that method. All 87 signed. Yes. Because they don't care. They do have forensic data to back it up because, like I said, we are partnered with Encase, and this particular company uses Encase as well. So what they did, they went in case snapshot of the machines under the guise of, oh, we just got an alert, your computer's virus. Yeah, and they, and they go get, they've, they've got the whole forensics data line as well in case they have to go to court. But they want to avoid court simply because of the costs. You know, no company wants to take an employee to court. No, we've never been to court, to answer your question. Our product's never been to court because we just provide the front-end data for something like an end case. No, 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 I understand. Right. I'd love to take that offline with you. Love to. Had another question? No, it's not a sim space product. It's... it's cons it's considered outbound content compliance by IDC. Yeah, it is. It's an IDS backwards, but we're also looking at content. We're not looking at packet attacks or anything else. We're not looking at URLs. We're looking at the content. Well, we're going to see that in the content, right? We can parse several types of IP or TCP content. The stuff we can't parse, we still capture anyway. And the, the thing about our product is we only store the things that are events. So if I send an email to you and there's nothing in that email message that's, that raises a flag, hey, you know, I'll see you for dinner tonight, whatever, it doesn't get sta saved on our product. It doesn't get saved in the database. It doesn't get logged as an event. So all the good stuff that goes by. Or SSL, if, they're, if you're not looking for SSL. We have customers that turn off categories like adult. They don't give a crap. They'll turn off shopping. You know, because they, they told their IT people to buy stuff on eBay. You know? But you can also regulate it down to what subnets and everything else can do what. Or to look on what subnets for what. So. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know if we can. 
focus or not. Yes. Actually, I've got one little, a little better here. Instead of my VMware, we put an appliance downstairs so that I can take some data back to my linguists. Now, we don't have identity match turned on, but we are on the wireless. So I want to see you guys, you know, have a lot of fun and go to a lot of sites and generate a lot of events for me to take back because it only makes the product work better. Okay, so somebody had asked about somebody had asked about encryption. We do not decrypt encrypted data, but we can note that it's going on. We see the from and to hosts, so somebody's you know SSHing out to their box out in the world somewhere. We don't see the passwords. We don't see anything else. Boy, the box is busy. Yes, it, it does. Yes, I do. Unfortunately,
try this over the spotty signal. All right, what we've seen so far is some webmail, some encrypted SSH and SSL. I expected my SSL was going to be quite high. Some shopping, sports, and webmail. And I'm viewing this by category right now. But there's two for hacker research, and let's go look at those. Okay. Search window security at techtarget.com. Got flagged as hacker research. Now, you can argue this all day, but the context of the data on that page has hacker research-related information in it. And Frignik.info. Yes, question in the back. There are keywords, and the keywords are weighted. So certain keywords near certain other keywords, things of that nature. So, for example, the product clearly knows the difference between breast cancer and chicken breast and, you know, female breast. It, you know, it, it certainly can understand those. It understands the language in context. No, actually, our linguists back in Denver actually create this. They create the, the engine and the categories themselves. The interesting thing here is that you can actually go out and see the rendered event. Okay, so there's the data of the actual HTTP session. This one didn't render very well, did it? Lovely. Ripped up the JavaScript. Ah. How to Google hack Windows servers. Nice. So that's what they were looking at. And I will say that in, in our product, preventative security, which this category is within, is probably the one that gets the most false positives, but it can be tuned quite quickly. For example, if I don't want to see another security tech target, I can simply ignore this because I would consider this a white hat site. I'm sorry? You're absolutely right. And that's the point. That's why we actually identify them. But I don't want to see it again, so I'm ignoring it. Right. It, it, as, as, as Iridium says in the back, you know, maybe the customer wants to see that. So we're going to err on the side of more false positives, if you will, than we are, you know, ignore things completely. Got a question in the back. If it's not an event, how long is it cached in the system? Ba basically, if you think about it this way, we actually take a TCP session. We watch the SYN SYNAC act. That's our trigger. As soon as the session gets set up, we, began, we begin collecting the packets on that session. As we do reassembly and start looking into that session, we then do a some quick analysis. There is the capability to ignore source and destination IP addresses, for example. Maybe the whole IT security group is on the 10.10.10 space, and they're excluded. As soon as it sees 10.10.10, it throws it that session to the bit bucket. Okay, it's all, th this is all managed in memory. And the box that's running this right now has four gigs of RAM on it and a one gig uh, RAM disk. Maxi. So how do we do name resolution all the way down to the user? This product has three separate methods primarily geared around Windows and Active Directory because that's the flavor of the day in corporations. One of them is a small executable that runs at logon 
that actually grabs locally the username, the MAC address, the IP address, and the host name and forwards it to the appliance. The appliance caches that information. So you log out and I log into that station. The script runs again. Exactly. And another way that we do that is we integrate with the Active Directory and the DHCP servers and drag their logs. That's a second method. And the third method is to use, uh, I don't remember. I never use it because it's not as reliable as I would like it to be. So I only use those two primarily. Question up front. That's true. It doesn't show that it was you, but if your responsibility on your machine per your company's policy is that where you are logged on, you are responsible, it doesn't matter if it was me logged on as you. So, again, go back and look at your company's policies, and you can easily identify by the way they're worded whether or not your company is or is planning to deploy a solution like this. In my world, you have to lock the screen when you walk away, regardless of what's on it. Because I'm walking away leaving an open system for Shadow to have fun with. And as much as I like Shadow, I don't trust him as far as I could throw it. And with a hurt arm, that ain't very far. No offense, Shadow. Or, there he is. The product actually scales out quite well. It's a multiple collector to a single console type environment. This particular one that's downstairs is a standalone unit, um, but it can be distributed. You can put them any, anywhere. Uh, the interesting point about our product is, unlike our competitors' sales hat, um, we, don't, we don't sell it by the number of collectors you have, like ISS does their, you know, their uh, IDSs. We sell it by the number of users you're protecting. Okay, so if you want to deploy 500 sensors around the world, you pay the license fee for the number of users. You can deploy as many sensors as you want. It's just a hardware in incremental. Um, we can see today 100 megabit per second of event data before the box begins to backlog. Now, when I mean event data, that means bad stuff in session. We've got those sessions reassembled and they're gonna be flagged or are being in the process of being flagged as events. We can see 100 megabits of throughput. So we can drink off of gigabit pipes without a problem. It's just if there's a gigabit of solid traffic that's bad, we're gonna drop some. And there are ways around that with load balancers and multiple boxes. Well, in your network, all you have to do is set up a little FTP of a couple of directories of porn, and it's going to shut the box down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One of our competitors does this all on Windows. Have fun if you find that box. And I've actually got a present if somebody can find me some Vontu code. Vontu is one of our competitors, and I'm looking for their code. Just so I can review it. I don't need the, the uncompiled code. I'll be happy with just the binaries. Okay? That's V-O-N-T-U. Jnoble at gmail.com. I'm, I'm serious about the prize, too. Any other, I see another question over here. No, we do not do skin tone detection today. We are looking at adding the um, was it, the FBI's um, hash table set of all the child porn. Because I don't care who you are, child porn sucks. 
right? I have three, I have four kids, three with me. Um, not into that shit. And unfortunately, here's a good statistic if you want to burn something into your brain. If you've got 6,000 employees at a company, you've got eight machines that have kitty porn on them. It's a known reliable statistic from the FBI. Yeah. Not necessarily that they're pedophiles. You have eight machines that have kitty porn on them, that have it on them. It doesn't mean if, if my machine was one of them, then I'm the one that did it. It could be that there was a Trojan on my machine and somebody down, used it as a, you know, a download source to store it. All right? I mean, what's happening out there today to machines and corporations is unbelievable. And if you're not anywhere near close to it, you just wouldn't. Come see me after. I've got stories to, I could tell stories all weekend about shit I've seen. Just in, I've been working with this company since February. You know, one of the last things I want to share with you is before I got employed, one of the things I had to sign with this company was a disclaimer saying I would not sue my company for the stuff I was absolutely going to see that's distasteful. For real. It's a requirement for employment for even the salespeople because we get to see this data when we go into Corporation X and stumble across some kitty porn. You know, yeah, that makes me really upset. And I'll never be able to burn those images out of my head. You know, that in the next four days dealing with the FBI. That's not a lot of fun either. So. Actually, uh, they were pretty cool to work with. They were a lot cooler to work with than the company's legal department, I'll tell you that. Oh, I think we've got some more shopping. I expect I'm going to see a lot of shopping. Oh, look at that. That's just beautiful. <laughs> Fecalface.com. <laughs> Maxie? <laughs> Hold on. I mean, let, let, I, I, I'm really, oh, it's real. I, I, I'm afraid, to, I'm just really afraid. 6633202. All right. Well, you know, you only live once. Oh, God, nice. All right, so this is a blog site. And we see this a lot where you're going to see a lot of conflict in a blog site because of the verbiage that's used. Again, this is a linguistics engine. We look at the context of the language. Okay. All right, so that about wraps up my time. Is that fair enough? Is that right? I got time for any more questions if anybody wants. Yes. Multilingual. No. There isn't a product like this on the market that is, and that's the problem. Because linguists... No, 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 no. What you have to do is type it in German. You have to do everything in a foreign language. You know, so that's a really good cipher to get by this. Send all your email in German. And check all of, yes, it would. And check all of your attachments as well. That's the other thing this does is it scans attachments. So especially in SMTP, when outbound, somebody sends out an Excel spreadsheet with 650 rows of personal information dealing with health care records with credit card numbers and their last expi expiration date and the three-digit and four-digit magic numbers. Gee, uh, I've never seen that before. We catch it. And we also use hashes from the Social Security Administration and the credit card companies to verify that those Social Security numbers are actual real Social Security numbers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yet. Doesn't matter. We catch it.
Not there today. Just not there today. It, the, whole ling, the, the whole foreign language issue right now is being battled. Um, there's a number of issues that, that drive that as well. I mean, anybody here familiar with European re privacy regulations? Okay. Am I going to be able to deploy this product in Europe? Exactly. So what's the point of me translating this to German if I can't use it in the EU? Right. And India, India is working on their own privacy legislation anyway right now. So, you know, I think the whole industry that's doing this right now is kind of on hold until something solidifies. Uh, not that I'm aware of. And if you are looking for a job and we are hiring, you're going to have to move to Denver. Yeah. No thanks. Any other questions? So watch what you do on your networks. Thanks.